You ready? What is Bring the energy. Bring the energy. This is about control. Everybody knows. Everyone complies. We're the kinds of pros. I don't need a plane. I just hit the road. I do what I want. I can't sell my soul. Market about the crash. This is what you chose. Ruin the cause. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the cause. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking the road. Ruin the country. I've been best of gold. You're going to take the mark. I'm taking Thanks, Matt. <laughs> you got it, buddy. And of course, and always lovely. Beautiful oh, and always lovely. Oh, what was that? <laughs> I was literally, I barked like a dog. No one heard. <laughs> and it hurt my throat. So I had okay. My, do, <laughs> my dog barky this? wipe. <laughs> And <laughs> That's exactly what I did. Oh, whatever. This is Lindy. Welcome to the show, honey. Hi, thank you. <laughs> we have completely botched that entire oh. intro, but either way, we got some fun stuff to talk about. But before we get started, did you hear my voice crack? Yeah. Y'all was in your earphones. I remember when I hit puberty. Yeah, I'm going through a stage. Your it's, balls just dropped. Yeah, it's a stage in life. It's too early for this. Yeah, That's no kidding. Shit. You want to start over? No. All right, I'm kidding. Jesus, you act like you Unison. Guys, God, you battered women. What you, you guys are jaded. What happened? Who started over on you? Yeah, uh, you, no, you. I do not. Start numerous over. times. And when I do start over, re- Ian just replays it. He just plays it twice. Exactly. I heard a podcast episode the other day. I did two intros. I'm like, you gonna cut one of them out? All nope. that talent behind that machine. He left it all in there on purpose because it was funny. Well, anyway. Welcome to the Protect Your... I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it to you. Anyway, before we get started, we've got some awesome shit to talk about today. Uh, But before we get started, I want to pass it over to Ian so you can tell our audience what to do, buddy. Yeah, if you uh, are enjoying this intro and want to hear more, please help support the channel by smashing Mm. that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free, and it greatly helps out our channel. What he said. I love that. What? Mm. Damn right. He said. Mm. And I was going to say... Yeah. And what he said... So, real quick... Ian's got a channel. It's called Hot Sauce Beats up in here. Um, he does reactions. He makes beats. He does ghost hunting. He does excursions with his kids. He does all sorts of fun shit. So be sure to go follow his uh, Ian takes the show. Thank you. Shotgun approach. And he YouTube just hit 75,000. 75,000. He's, he's got a big channel. He's doing big shit. He's fun to entertaining uh, and fun to watch and fun to follow along. And. He is kind enough to let our show borrow his whole spiel, uh, which is where that comes from. So go follow Ian also. And before we get started, Zach, what are we drinking? Are we drinking the house? Grab that Brickway all the way in the back, that Brickway rye. Oh, I don't know if we've new, had. That's a new guy. Yeah, we've never drank that. Anymore. A local joint. Yeah, we've had the Brickway. Um, thanks, babe. We've had the Brickway bourbon on the show. I don't think we've had the rye. You want to know what's funny is this is episode 52 okay. and we are still drinking whiskeys for the first time on the show. Oh, dude. And we've got a whole, we, we, we're <laughs> we, not even, we could do that for, wait until we if, bring out the gins. Yeah. I'm going to drink this because it's very oh. pretty. That is pretty, but I think we've had that. Oh, maybe no, not because there's that. not enough drink on it. I don't no. even know what that is. So you can, while no. we intro the Brickway, okay. um, I'll you can, some yeah, yeah. You can read on that. <laughs> see, see what the hell it is. Okay. Um, she doesn't know what. And then you can intro. It. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's anyway, brown. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> this is, looks like whiskey. It's with the whiskey. Um. So, r- r- listen. I've had the Brickway products. They're doing a good job. I know the owner, um, and master distiller. The he is um, he's doing some good shit. He also does beer. I think that's where yeah. he started. Yep. Uh, with Brick Brickway Brewing, and then is that uh, local. Yeah, yeah, it's local here in Omaha. Okay. So uh, yeah, go check out his operation. It's uh, it's some good shit, and I like the rye actually better than the bourbon, personally. Are you becoming a? Because I think you said that the last show about another. Are you rye a, too. Are you a rye guy? Yeah, are you a rye guy? Mm. Oh. You know, I don't think so. I, I, I don't. You know, I don't know. I, I'm not becoming a rye guy. That's for sure. If I'm becoming anything, it's gin. It's a gin guy. Yeah, it's a gin guy. You are becoming a yeah. gin guy. The other night, Lindy was like, "I feel like when Brooke was over her house." She's like, I don't know why, but when Brooke comes over, I just feel like drinking a gin and tonic. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> okay, perfect. But um, but we if, haven't had margaritas instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if anything, I'm becoming a gin guy. I've always liked rye, but I think our rye that we are making has maybe pushed me a little more towards the rye because our rye is going to be done sooner. Our rye is 
bold and delicious and exploding so with flavors. Good. Yeah, it's got a lot of vanilla and honey undertones. And um, I think our rye is such a bold rye that it's maybe allowed me to appreciate rye, just kind of like our gin is pushing me towards the gin. So I don't think I'm becoming a rye guy. I but think s- it's whatever you're working on at the time. That's right. What kind of guy yeah. you are. <laughs> certainly, yeah, certainly my... In a couple of years, you're going to be a bourbon guy again. Correct. We'll see. When the bourbon's ready, I will certainly be a bourbon guy. I find the gin thing the most interesting, though, because you used to hate gin. Like, I literally you refused disliked to drink gin. it. Yeah. And now you're becoming a gin guy. And I just think that's so cool because we're here to witness the start of your gin journey. Dude, and I think the gin journey is going to be the biggest part of our journey. I don't know why. I just have a because it's really fucking good. Yeah, and it's fast. I, the, it's, the, our the, our people will be able to taste our gin before our whiskey. Right. Our our model. Just so everyone knows. Uh, so I've got a business plan. I'm not going to put it all out there yet. Um, but essentially, my model is expressions of different kinds of distilled spirits. All of them. So we're going to release every state is going to have its own expression of our product. Attached to a purpose, okay? And in a world where there are so many regulations to get new and unique and different flavors out of distilled spirits, aged spirits like whiskeys, like bourbons and rice, it's much harder to get different expressions and have the, the, um, the flavor profiles be really vast than it is to do gin. So for different expressions, for different locations, it's fast to produce. And I I learned that you can make some really good gin. I didn't have to hate it all those years. I had to, I don't know, make my own gin. I guess I I had to make my own gin that I like. And to the expression point, all you have to do is change one little thing in the mash bill. Oh, this is huge. That's right. So now that you've started your gin journey, have you, because I I know how you you do our research. Time out. Say gin journey five times. Gin journey, gin journey, gin journey, gin journey. (laughs) I was four. I was four deep. You lost it. In the meantime, let's pour this. Babe, are you drinking? Yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. You're good. Ian, go on your gin journey with you and make a video out of it. He's going to go on the next one. Okay. I'm going to go on the tequila journey. Yeah? Huh? <laughs> I don't Protect your purpose tequila. Anyways. But have you, uh, have you noticed, like, are, are you starting to try other gins now and find gins that you do like, like, outside of the gin that you're making? Yeah. So I just appreciate them more. It's the same thing with, with bourbons, and it's the same thing with, with rye, aged brown spirits. Um, it's the same thing with tequilas. Distilled spirits, dude. If you get to the point of appreciating the actual distilled spirit, they are depthy. Well, there think- is a lot of depth to distilled spirits. In I mean, aside from like vodkas, dude, the flake. There's a lot of a lot of care, a lot of TLC, a lot of brains, a lot of science goes into dialing in Definitely these flavors, dude. And the the distillers and the teams behind those flavors are working their asses off. And if you never get past you know, the taste of alcohol, or if you're taking shots or mixing it with a Coke, like do you, however you want to drink it is up to you. But if you never dive into the appreciation, you'll never fully appreciate it. Like you've got to search for it. And I never searched for gin. Now that you've gone through creating a gin, you understand the process it takes. Correct. I think the way like your average spirits drinker, of course, leans towards bourbon is because of the appreciation of the time it took to get to that bottle. You know what I mean? Like yeah. gin isn't necessarily the same thing for an average drinker. They're like, oh, OK, you produced it and it was in a bottle. Yeah, dude. Whereas a bourbon, you know, you know, it went through it's some shit to get to you. You know what I mean? And dude, 10 years ago, like this is not a long time ago. Five years ago, really. I mean, five years ago, the the distilled spirits world as a whole was significantly different major changes in the last five years 10 years ago bourbon was still grandpa's old cough medicine i mean bourbon was still it'll put hair on your chest gasoline oh you know scotch on the rocks and you know it it, it, 10 years ago there was no young people drinking whiskey i was like the only young person drinking people like you drink whiskey neat on the you drink whiskey on the rocks even then i was drinking canadian whiskey i was drinking crown i didn't know shit i just knew i liked whiskey but in the last 10 years, I mean, the distilled spirits world has evolved so much into so much appreciation. And, and you know, 
the way it was made a hundred years ago, grandpappy's old recipe, I mean, moonshiners and, and, and you couldn't Google a mash bill. You, it, that was generational. It was carried on. It was a specialty. It was a craft right. that you had to know how to do it from someone. And since then, obviously, the scientists have gotten a hold of this process now. So whereas there was so much luck and a lot of just old like family recipes and processes that were held tight. I mean, dink, 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 Google how to make bourbon. And I mean, information has changed the distilled spirits game in a huge way. So, yeah, man, it's fun. It's fun to watch it. And and as you learn, if for the listeners out there, if you're if you're wondering how people drink whiskey and enjoy it, uh, go on like a distillery tour, babe. You're standing over there, okay, sitting man. over there. Yeah, <laughs> mouth watering. I promise you, you can introduce this product. You haven't. You're holding on to it. Let's go. Okay. This she's, is called, she's on. <laughs> this is called Manifest Whiskey Project, and I absolutely love the bottle. Pretty. I don't even care how it tastes. <laughs> I mean, I do, but um, it is a blend of straight bourbon and straight rye. It's a boo rye. It's a blender. Yeah. Mm. And we're going to see how it tastes. This is batch number four. Mm. Uh, fourth release of the Manifest Whiskey Project is a foray into new territory. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Yeah, please don't. But it says it's a uh, cream brulee spice cake and tobacco transition. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Creme some, brulee. Those are some undertones. Lemon creme brulee. Spicy cake. Dude, I'm excited to see well, what Linda, you, you Oh, that's a heavy pour. Linda, you've quit smoking Lindy's for uh, a while now, morning. so you can... Get your uh, <laughs> nicotine fix here. Yeah, so a lot of those, uh, a lot of the the barrel, Ooh, um, really good. yeah, that um, the char it's and and like the yeah, oak glass. will give off those tobacco flavors. Is that a pretty common uh, undertone? Tobacco? Yeah, it's common. Yep, it's it. I mean, yeah, it's one of the ones that would be on a on a tasting sheet that you you know leather and dirt. A lot of whiskey, you taste dirt, man. You know. Anyway, all right. So let's get started today with the shit we're going to talk about. We've got a couple things we're going to talk about. Number one, what do you think? That is so good. Yeah. All right. Well, you owe that. Oh they owe you God. our latest sponsor. Where's the bottle? You put it back. Oh my gosh, that might be my favorite. Oh, it's pretty good. It smells and like. You, uh, so you said that's a bourbon dirt. and rye that's, blend. I was right? just going to say that, dude. What? Before I set it down, I was like, it smells kind of dirty. Dirt. And then you said dirt, like right <laughs> on cue. Ironically, so ooh, it's spicy. You can taste the rye in that. It's spicy can you later taste on. the creme brulee? So yeah. good. Shout Is there out any creme brulee undertones? Ooh, it's different. It's kind. It's kind so of got a perfumey <laughs> undertone too. Weird. Perfumey notes. It's punchy on the nose. Pretty good. Anyway, all right. Well, listen. Enough about the whiskey talk. We only talk a little bit of whiskey on this show. We it's mostly not as funny once as every this ten episodes. Yeah, we mostly <laughs> just drink it. Anyhow, let's get cracking. First thing on the rocket docket in the A block today, we've got uh, Mitch McConnell completely uh, checking out. What the fuck? <laughs> Whatever he did. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying not to say the F word as much. Oh. Okay. Why? Did your mom call you? Everyone's just getting so mad. No. Be honest. Your mom called you. My mom gets upset. People have to like turn it off. They can't let their kids listen. I'm going to try and do better. If their kids are listening to this. I've already used the F word today. (laughs) We all have. You're not good for the brand. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So listen, I'm going to work on it. All right. Let's see how I do. Did you see? I stopped myself for you. Listen, you can rewind it. I stopped myself from saying the F word. I'm going to see if you I can need go. A, you I need a, a word, a filler word. Have I already said Punch the sickles. F word today? <laughs> have I already said the F word yet today? I'm so used to you. I, probably. Maybe. All right. Well, if I have it. Uh, hamburgers. I'm going to see. <laughs> <laughs> hamburgers. Hamburgers. I'm going to try and see how long I can go without saying it. So. Oh. Oh, okay. Good That's fuck, not going to take long with this. So class. Matt's coming up <laughs> with a new program of 75 hard. He's not allowed to say fuck uh, for yes, 75 Yes, I've got either. a coin jar back there, too, and it's loaded. Every time I've said I got $380,000 in a corn jar. <laughs> so uh, anyway, all right. So we don't know what the hell happened to Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is the Senate majority, no, minority leader. He's uh, the head Republican in the Senate. He's a state senator. Rhino. Yeah. Rhino, for sure. Something went down on uh, on this video we're about to watch. And 
it's weird. Let's let's. Get I have to, not seen this, so I'm excited. Let's get to let's get to oh watching. I guess, huh? Let's get to get to playing. Ian, tell yourself to roll that video. Roll that video. <laughs> Yeah, let's see this. Uh, we're on a path to finishing the NDA uh, this week. It's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh, uh... Boston. What? What? He just stopped. Okay, Mitch. Anything else you want to say? I'm sure it's go back to your office. Do you want to say anything else to the press? Whoa. Let's go back to you. Go ahead, John. Could you address what happened at the start of the press conference and it was related to your injury from earlier this year where you suffered a concussion? Is wait, wait. That- no, Did he come back out? Yeah, this is back out. Yes, like. yeah. So he came back out like five or ten minutes later. They brought him back out. Or his clone, one and of the did- two. What a clown Fini- show. Finish it out. This is only 20 seconds left. Fine. You're fine. You're fully able to yeah. do your job. Yeah. Mr. Lear, can I just get your reaction yeah. to... Just skipping right over the questions. Next. Wow. Yeah. And these people are in charge of our country. Run our country. Unbelievable. Whoa. The f- We're all like this. Bug. Why isn't there an age limit for this shit? Yes. Dude? Holy buckets. Yeah, term limits, age He's limits. He's been in a senator since night our whole life. Life, lives, lives, all yeah, of us. Except or. you. You were probably five or six. Why you got to say that? <laughs> Why you got to bring up old shit? Literally. But 1985, dude. Why? Time to go. Is there nobody else? Is that how long he's been a senator for? Yeah. Jesus. 85? That's 30. I was born in 88. 38 he's years. He's been a senator my entire life, essentially. 38 years. Like, you were born in 85? 84. Oh, oh young man. Yeah. Whipper snapper. Oh, whipper snapper. <laughs> Green as the day is long, my friend. But like, why the? And he can't even. What? What do you think happened? I think you he think had that a stroke. G- you think he had a stroke? His fucking yeah, a wires. Guy, I, I don't. They wouldn't have let him come back out. You think he was a clone? Maybe they don't even I, know. I, I think, think it's super glitched. weird. I think it's. I don't know. Do you his think wires he got, His wires got crossed. Yeah. I just think he's old as fuck. And like, literally lost his train of thought and didn't know what the fuck to say. Same thing with like Biden. Biden. Like, you think he lost his train of thought? And look at his face. He's like digging for something, like trying to. Come I up think with his it. brain died. I think he was trying to. His brain how to shut breathe. off. Yes, essentially. It it looked like he. You know what it reminded me of when you get drunk as fuck in the army and then have to wake up and do PT the next day and you're like just trying to hold it together, <laughs> like as long as possible. <laughs> what do you mean do push? You know what I? Yeah, you know. Or what? you have to stand in formation and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> You're I'm trying not die. to fall over or lock your knees up? You're just everything, every brain power you have is just trying to keep you on your feet at that moment. So I've got two perspectives on this. The first perspective is, assuming this is just an old man with health problems. Assuming there's nothing extraordinarily nefarious going on here, mm-hmm. such as um, He's uh, a robot. him being a robot or him being a clone or him being a lizard person in a lizard or a shapeshifter, a shapeshifter. <laughs> go on or uh, what, you know, whatever those crazy right wing radical deplorables think, uh, assuming there's there's none of that going on. And this is just an old man. Who is sick. You, you almost felt bad for him. like, like what? The f- him. Right. I feel awful. For the, they're parading this guy. Why, why? Why are they doing this? What is to gain from this? Hey, Mitch, you know what? I think it's time you you Step fucking down. retire. Right. Damn it! I said the f word. Mm-hmm. Put a. You didn't last long. A Pay tally up, mark. sucker. Pay up, sucker. Pay, you Damn said a hundred dollars to every person on the show. That is not what I said. <laughs> are you get? Did you forget? Are you freezing up? You are Matt, getting old, dude. Matt, are you okay? <laughs> Do you have anything else to say, Matt? Are you okay? Are we going to hear anything else about this on the news? When did this like happen? Why it happened? When was this? Like what? This no, you're not going to hear anything else about it. 
I think this was yesterday. Bro, go back to, I, I want to see just his face again. I, honestly, the, the guy is obviously being controlled. And when when you have questions, like when I say things and we say things like they're being controlled. And you go, oh, that's a conspiracy. And then you see people that literally cannot, are completely incapable of finishing a thought and then transcribing said thought, delivering it in a sentence, in words. If you can't complete a thought and convert that thought to words and deliver a message at a podium with the United States seal on it, it's Who's doing this then? Like, if you can't understand that a person that's 80 years old or whatever, I'm sure he's 80 plus. Well, gotta be. Yeah, I think he, yeah. I think right on the nose, actually, when I was like, look, looking 85. Him up. 80, 80. Dude, you got an 80 year old that can't finish a sentence at the podium. We also have one of these as our the sitting president. But if, if they can't complete a thought, do you think they have a, a, a sharp enough and a complex enough and a, a a healthy enough thought process brain to actually dissect decisions be, uh, for the well-being of our, our country? A, a national security the decision? A nuclear button? Who's controlling this? I I, I swear I, I they're gonna they're gonna they're not even going to fucking do anything. I'm, no, I'm it's not speechless. A thing. They're not going to talk about it. They're not going to do anything you with this. Said it again too. I said another yep. F word? Yeah, you just did. <laughs> this is going to get long, folks. And I may have said one early on in the show. Uh, so let's it's just a three, add one it's more. It's a 3.5. Yeah. No, we're going to just run well, the ones we tally. Okay. Um, I don't know, man. It's sad. It's, it's, it's depressing not only for this man. It's despicable and disgraceful for those people around him who brought him back out here, who didn't just say, hey. Let's call this one a day, Mitch. Yeah. Hey, Mitch had a bad day. <laughs> oh, Mitch is sick. Mitch is tired. Mitch, don't worry about it, press. We would never allow this level of person to run our country. And that's what they're doing. This is the Senate minority leader. The head Republican splitting decisions, making important decisions on the well-being of our armed services, our national security. Well, we're expected to believe he is. I also just want to I just want to show some love to anyone that's <sighs> over the age of 40 and coming up on moments like this in their life where they freeze due to old age. <laughs> I feel like that was a jab. What? What is this? What is what? You got a gun, you got a silencer on you're your. You're not gun? the only just... person that's forty or older, Mac. I'm showing a lot of love here. I know what you're. Well, oh, you're trying to get me to say that <laughs> word again. <laughs> yeah, listen, I I agree. I feel bad for this guy. I don't. It doesn't look like he's a clone, but you know how them clones all got them pale skins, like Jamie Fox. What? Uh, Did you see what? Jamie Fox? Uh. You see Jamie Foxx? You talking about his video saying that he's back and not a clone? Man. Two movies coming out too. One right now and Man. next one in two weeks. Man. Anyway, I, I don't Hamlin. know that DeMar he's Hamlin a clone. Was at, uh, oh, yeah. DeMar OTAs Hamlin was a clone. And yeah, we got lots of clones running around out there. Everybody has a twin out there, right? Yeah, like a doppelganger. Yeah. Not yeah. pretending to be each other, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not everybody has a twin. Not everybody has a clone. Um Anyway, man, I don't know. I guess we move on to the next. Any other thoughts about this other than? I want to see it one more time just because you. If he's a robot, he needs to be taken out of office. You need to rewire him. If he's yeah. not a robot, he needs to be taken out maybe, of office. Maybe so. the robots are ran by like Wi-Fi and just the signal was lost there for any... like the Marchese house. They just have bad internet. <laughs> that makes sense. But was a... that press? Was that in here? Was this a... in the studio? <laughs> be a... the green screen. I have a question. So when does he? When is his? When is he done? Like, does it death? No. Like well, years. he gets if re he does he keeps it, yeah. getting reelected. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when? So either he dies or they stop reelecting him, because there's no term limit. Wow. Which what city? Kentucky? Is that? Where I think from? Kentucky. Come on, Kentucky. Hey. Kentucky. Hey. Whiskey. There's not a better person. I could represent. He was Kentucky. 76 at least the last time Dude, he got reelected. You should get 
one of these distillers to run the fucking state, be the state senator. They'd probably they do it. great. They've got small business interests. They're they're big <laughs> in the community. Uh, you know, almost all whiskey distillers that I know of are are full blown philanthropists. Um, you bring up a good point though, Matt. With talking about age limits, there's so much stuff that older people in his age that are just so they could have the most brilliant minds, but they're so out of touch of stuff technology and, oh, and, bro, and you think this guy could run an iPad no if you can't run an iPad you can't run a state and if you not in this country if you can't run an iPad you certainly can't run a country do you think That's he has your, a smartphone I don't think he can dial a phone number he's got a fucking does he still use the rotary dial he's got a Zach Morris <laughs> fucking oh car yeah phone. <laughs> bag phone no I don't think any of that I just think bro this guy is is on his last leg. If, if this is a, a real human, this is the real Rich Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Oh, yeah, something happened uh, again. in his brain right there. Yeah, that was that was yes. not good. No, Lindy might be right. It might have been a stroke. Like a little miniature. I'm sure they. I doing I extent. whole watch it again. All right, press play from right where it is. Oh, I. I want to see the follow up. The questions. He looks scared almost. He looks like he's not there. They're all like, what, what? His brain has left his body. Not even blinking either. Look at the guys in the background. They're like, uh, Mitch. We've seen this. We've seen this happen to the president. We know what to do. Okay, Mitch? Yeah. Okay, what the fuck? Who's oh, this dude? Do you want to say anything else? And they're treating him like a fucking, right. like he's in a fucking home. Well, and they're like, looks like he should be. He can't everyone's literally walk. like sh ahead, rushing him off. Like. Could you address what happened here at the start of the press conference? And it was related to your injury from earlier this year where you suffered a concussion. Is that... No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. 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 You're fully able to yeah. do your job. And, yeah. Do your job. I love yeah. that's how that's the yeah. question. Can you do your fucking job? You know what? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Dude, that's a fantastic question. Can you do uh, your sir, job? Do you think you can do your job? Because you're standing in a room absolutely 100% full of... People that absolutely 100% do not believe that you can. You do not appear like you can do your job. They're doing the same thing to Joe Biden, man. It, it, again, uh, un, under the master assumption that these are not clones, that these are not robots, that these are not, you know, genetically engineered, created people in a lab. Assuming Ian's right about his ears, it's just two different kinds of ears or whatever. Joe Biden ought to be ashamed of herself. The people that are parade this dude's family. The people that are parading this dude in front of and our entire country ought to be ashamed of that. This makes That's us embarrassing, look dude. terrible. Oh, yeah. That's exactly. embarrassing. But as as we've said a, a hundred times on the show, if, if your intention is to make America look incompetent, incapable, and weak, we're doing a great job. What would you do? They're crushing it. But, yeah. You'd march these goofers out on in press conferences and out on stages across the whole world, and you'd make their brains shut off. We need young, like 40, That's what I'm saying, 45 year old. And what? People what's in the minimum? Office. 35, right? I think 35 to run. I don't know. So yeah, they should, I, I they should have 35 should have, minimum, 65 you maximum. You should have some yeah. life yes. experience or something. I get all that, but come on, man. 80 years old? That's, you can't yeah. even. No, formulate a thought. Literally. Well, what about the the dude, that other dude? Fuck, I, the I one that got elected. That's the guy that had a stroke that can't also can't talk. Oh, he got right. elected. Yeah. That he got elected yeah. after he had a stroke. They avoided a debate. Said he needed a teleprompter because he couldn't think. Essentially, because he was incapable of his own thought and completing sentences and delivering them, and he got elected anyway. Crazy. Why are they doing this, man? And never in a million years would I have imagined this would be what our our elected officials would look like. Like this would be what our government, our senators, our Senate would look like. I don't it, even, it's crazy. Being a politician, dude, doesn't even seem like anything that young kids are trying to achieve. You know what I mean? It used to be something where they might like yeah, sought after try them. to be the president of the United States. Well, look what they do to these kids, man. Look what they do to people that run. They crucify. Oh yeah, they nobody drag them wants, through the mud. Yeah, yeah. nobody wants to put their se themselves out there. Why? Because you know, everybody's got skeletons in their closet. Everyone's afraid that you know, their brains are basically being tracked on these smartphones. I mean, they're they're sending nudie pictures and 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 doing 
goofy shit all over the place and, and quite frankly embarrassing things that they don't ever want to get out so you know why allow somebody to dig into your past yeah, like that exactly let somebody else do it let somebody else go into the public eye even like retired military like who have experience or you know mid 40s or early 50s to I mean, same I thing though they apply. fucking dig I mean, everything maybe. up on those dudes and fucking ruin their lives like yeah, maybe okay some of them yeah like <laughs> Oh, dude, it's just, it, yeah, it's it's a shame what they do to some of those people, man. Dude, it, there's a couple things like this, okay? Police officers. When I was growing up, military, ar- armed forces, famous, Hollywood. I mean, when, when you're grow- pro athletics, when you're growing up, all of us, we grew up in the same era, like... I want to grow up and be famous. Mm-hmm. I want to be a princess. Like I want to be a a professional football player. Like all of these things. I want to be an actor. And things as far as I want to be a police officer. They have literally attacked these individuals to a level from from one direction or the other to where Nobody wants to do this. When my kids say, I want to be famous, I look at them and sternly parent them and tell them, no, you do not. No, you don't. (laughs) You want to be rich? Yes. You want to be famous? No. You do not want to live that life. It used to be revered. It used to be something that was sought after. It used to be something that came along with a glamorous, fun life that people wanted to do and wanted to live. Before we realize what those people actually have to do to get there. Correct. (laughs) And now they're controlled. And in the military, you join the military. Same thing with my kids. I want to be in the Army. Our kids have been saying that. Mom and Dad in the Army, all of our friends in the military, you know, our kids said for years, I want to do the Army and I want to run a business. And they want to follow in their parents' footsteps. Well, the persecution that... People with our mindset are facing in the in the military and in these police forces. It's the same shit. We're now looking at our kids going, Do you? Do you want to be a cop? You sure? You know, my daughter dresses up in her cute little police outfit and says, I want to be a police officer. And I go, Well, not okay. on not, at four. Right. Okay. <laughs> not on my watch. Not today. <laughs> Good thing we've got another, you know, twenty years for that to happen. We'll see what the pre- police force looks like if we have one. I mean, literally, imagine what the police force will look like in it will look like the military. 10, 15 years. It will look like the military. Nobody, are they going to have to do a draft? Because no one's going to want it. They ain't going to they ain't gonna have enough people try and become police. It's not a draft in a dictatorship. I mean, you're, you're forced. That's true. You're, you're chosen, and that's what you do or you die. And you serve, and you are under the command of the president or the dictator. It will look like the military. I'm certain of it. Our, our, I mean, if you look at our military or our police force 20 years ago to now, it looks like the military. There's a reason why it, it looks like the military. And they just, uh, in most cases, don't behave like the military. They will. A police state. That's what that's called. We, we've gone to full-blown surveillance state. We've talked about it. You can't do anything without being on... On camera somewhere. CCTV, baby. Right. I try and tell my kids, you have to be careful. Everywhere you go, there's a camera. Everywhere. Everywhere. But in- yet, they can't find whose coke it is in the White House. <laughs> yeah, and yet, we can't find a video footage of an airplane hitting the Pentagon. Stop it. Anyway, let's go on to the next topic. Um, poor Mitch. Poor McConnell. Let's hope he gets through this. So, the next topic we're going to talk about is... There's some alien shit going on, right? Again. Yeah, more alien stuff. I'm curious. They had a they had a hearing uh in yesterday, I believe. I think it was yesterday, Cap- another whistleblower. Came Hill, a whistleblower. Yeah, there it is. Um We're gonna watch a video of one of the testimonies, right? Mm-hmm. Of one of the guys. From Ryan Graves. Ryan Graves. All right, Ian, tell yourself to roll that video. Roll that video. Exploded in again. I oh, like it. Okay. I like that way more. Chairman Grothman. Ranking Member Garcia, distinguished members of the House Oversight Subcommittee on National Security, Representatives Burchett and Luna. My name is Ryan Fobbs Graves, and I'm a former F-18 pilot with a decade of service in the U.S. Navy, including two deployments in Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Inherent Resolve. I have experience advanced UAP firsthand, and I'm here to voice the concerns of more than 30 commercial aircrew and military veterans who have confided their similar encounters with me. Today, I would like to highlight three critical issues that demand our action. As we convene here, UAP are in our airspace, but they are grossly underreported. 
These sightings are not rare or isolated. They are routine. Military aircrew and commercial pilots, trained observers whose lives depend on accurate identification, are frequently witnessing these phenomena. The stigma attached to UAP is real and powerful and challenges national security. It silences commercial pilots who fear professional repercussions, discourages witnesses, and is only compounded by recent government claims questioning the credibility of eyewitness testimony. Real quick, real quick for some context, because it was on a different video that we watched. Another guy here that's sitting, I think, to his left said, and it's a guess, but he thinks roughly 95% of sightings go unreported. Because of what he's saying right here, fear of sounding crazy or whatever, 95%. Okay. You want me to start back up? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Parts of our government are aware of more about UAP than they let on, but excessive classification practices keep crucial information hidden. Since 2021, all UAP videos are classified as secret or above. This level of secrecy not only impedes our understanding, but fuels speculation and mistrust. Yeah, yeah, press pause. In 2014, I was an F. What he just said was it, it not only impedes our ability to make sound judgments, but it incites speculation. Like it incites our brains and our population to let our minds wander, and it creates the worst. And I oftentimes wonder do they hold back information to make us go crazy? We know, and COVID showed us that, I mean, their intent is to make us be afraid out of our mind. And we also know that if they give us limited information, our minds will do the rest of the incitement of the fear. I oftentimes wonder about some of this classified stuff. Um, if, if they do that intentionally to make us just keep us on tilt, that keep us the afraid. That would only reason because no, well, I mean, why else wouldn't they just tell us? Yeah, if if some is going to get out, all of it needs to get out. But like the what's the men? In, what are they saying? Like men in black? Like if everybody knew about this, the whole world would. They can't go handle crazy. the truth. They can't handle it. You know that right. that kind of situation. But if half of it's getting out, like you said, then we're just making shit up at that point. All right. But there's nothing we could do about it either. If uh, isn't there? I don't know. Does does anyone think that? This isn't real. Does anyone think that they're, we're the only people in the galaxy? We're the only... I bet you it's still 50-50 in, you the, think? in the world. Because, again, people aren't talking about this news, and people still think you're crazy if you say aliens yeah, yeah. are real. So what are they, So people are watching this guy saying that he's crazy? Is he, has he specifically said aliens, though? Like, UFOs. Are... He's talking about unidentified well, phenomena. Well, like, and then, and then they use anything. the word, uh, uh, the biologics, uh, uh Non-human biologics, I think, is what they call it. Because uh, they, oh, yeah. so they, they did confirm that we, the United States government, are in possession of a non UAPs from another planet, and that inside that aircraft was non-human biologics. Like that's not an opinion, that's not a theory, that's not a conspiracy. That is fact. Uh, under oath, right here, they said that. I mean, a lot of shit goes. What if he right lied under oath? oath? Yeah. <laughs> So maybe it's not that they could. So this guy, listen, this 100%. guy could. This guy could be crazy. <laughs> I got a random question though. Yeah, how do you get to do something like this? Like, because he came to somebody and said, "Hey, I got all this information. Can I get in front of the?" Yeah, I don't know the answer. I imagine Congress yeah. says, "Hey, we want to blow it, into right? this." Yep, and then they have to request to have a speaker, um, and. Maybe this has been a plan for a few yeah. years to be like, how do we bring light to this? How do we? Yeah, if they launch an investigation, oath, they right. can subpoena them to court um, to to appear in front of Congress. Uh, I'm not sure the ins and the outs of it, but but Congress basically, surely they blow the whistle, and then someone in Congress finds out and says, "Hey, I want them to appear in front of Congress," and then they go through whatever that process is to get them there. Um, follow up question. How long before this guy kills himself? Well, yeah. How long before he gets suicided? Yeah. <laughs> um, dude, I, I just don't think there's, I feel like this is common knowledge. Like these videos came out years ago. The, I think Navy pilots maybe immediately confirmed it. They were like, no, that's real. And we see them all the time. That's not, that's not a one-off thing. They defy our so like one or two, like sneak out to the public and then. Right. Yeah. But. 
are they snuck out to the public or are they leaked out to the public is the question. Right. I feel like there's, I mean, I don't know. I guess I could be wrong. I could be the fucking crazy one too, but I feel like, of course, there's aliens. Of course. Oh, I had another one. Dang it. Of course there's aliens. We've probably missed a couple. Of too. course Just there is. Put a couple more check marks there. No, listen, I'm not. At least two. If you didn't catch it, it didn't happen. Fair. That's fair. You're right. I'm not doubting whether or not there is or is not, you know, extraterrestrial intelligent life out there. Assuming that all that other shit that they told us is real. But if this isn't real and they're delivering it to us as if it's real, but it isn't. So if you're on the other side of this, if you're basically saying, well, this isn't real, but they're delivering it to us like it's real, you now have admitted that our government will deliver information to us about space that isn't real. So either you believe in aliens right now, or you believe our government's fucking corrupt. You pick. <laughs> you pick. And I I can go either way. Yeah. I, te- I tend to think You both. can have two truths. Yeah, right. yeah 100%. I tend, I tend to think, to think yeah. it's real. They obviously know about it. They're obviously hiding it. Um, and they're they're delivering it to us in a slow, strategic, methodical way for whatever the reason. But in is. that same sentence, you you also either believe it's real or you also believe our government hides shit from us. Pick, yeah, right. Either way, this is not a great situation. Either you. way, you it, should it should open your eyes a little bit more right. to some other shit. My only question though is why, like, dude, this isn't just news that a a you know. Apple's being bought over or so, like this is this is extraterrestrial life is being admitted at Kong. Like, why is not everybody talk? This is world changing. Do you know why? Because no because one gives a fuck. It's because we have been completely the paradox numb only care of intolerance. We only care about transgenders. And gays. Yeah, we're black, hypnotized. Black versus dude. white. Yeah. This isn't alien versus human. This is black versus white. Dude, of course. This not. guy's a racist. God, I can't That's wait why. for when That's we have this. Speech. Damn right he is. He's <laughs> a homophobe. Those, those aliens are green. He's a He's bigot. He's fucking racist. Green yeah. lives matter. <laughs> green lives matter. <laughs> yes. This guy is a major green lives matter advocate. All lives matter. I think it's awesome. Right? I just think I want to know so much more about it because I w- there's nothing. What do you we think do alien whiskey is going to taste like? I would love to see what they actually look like versus our depiction right. of aliens. Well, we're we... doing an NFT project right now, which mm-hmm. um, we started way back in the NFT boom days. And I went, mm, I see this falling off quickly. Um, but we're still going to do it because we're going to we're going to do it as a uh, tracker for our whiskey. Um, and we're using aliens as our NFTs. Or a little yep. creature. A little green alien. I'm right? trying to make them Is look like... Uh, no, they're not green. They're, they're all like, but green. They're going to look bi- like Biden and Mitch yeah. McConnell? They're everything but green, right. Just yep. make them um, look human with like an antenna. Or yeah, something. so we've got some We've got some issues with, uh, you know, some whatever, protection of, of their personal brand that we can't do. But I wanted to make them all look like, like Zuckerberg <laughs> and uh, Bezos. I wanted to make them look like all these weirdos. Yeah. Um, you can without right i can exactly. but i can't right yeah. so it's uh it's hard to do but that's the that's the goal that's the intent anyway i don't know man i feel like this is uh it's a trap for for all you naysayers out there and the anti conspiracy people it's either the gov- it's a trap for right. sure either the government's lying to us about space or they're lying to us about space at this point. <laughs> so you can uh, pick which way you want to go, but either way you will land on our government is not being truthful to no us way. about this shit. And uh, we are obviously, as a population, completely numb to it, which we talk about often on the show. If you destroy the meaning of words. Information overload. If you If you literally take away truth, like a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl, the simplest of things... When you can no longer believe your own eyes, where my four-year-old daughter can no longer look at a girl and confidently say, that's a girl. Now my daughter can look at the aliens and say, that's a girl. You can't even look at a human and confidently say that's a human. We we just did it for a whole 15-minute set. It might be a cat. Is this think, dude a robot? Is this dude not? We like, truly what if aliens think... look exactly like us? Do you think aliens think Ooh. we are fucking crazy? What if They're Mitch like, McConnell? Bro, they don't I, even want to come We need to here. leave this planet ASAP. <laughs> Let's go back to Mars, dude. This Hold is on. crazy. What if Mitch McConnell 
is an alien. Is an alien. And he almost said it on accident. And yeah, and he was like, like oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to be in so much trouble for this. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be so mad. Zorg is going to be pissed. Like Joe Biden always <laughs> says. He says, they're going to get mad. At me. They're going to be, I'm going to get in trouble. They're going to be mad at but me. But Biden, this. though, he just, he just, ah, fuck it. I, I forgot. Next. <laughs> Next. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Biden is way more fluent. Well, because it's happened I don't so many times. He just rolls with about. it. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. Next. Biden, <laughs> Biden is way more fluent in, I just lost my train of thought and have no idea what I was trying to say and don't have the words to get out what I was oh, trying to say. Anyway. Uh... Yeah. Moving right along. <laughs> Anyway, I don't Aliens, know, man. Am I right? Press play on this thing. Let's see what the rest of this guy has. Or this 18, guy has. Foxtrot pilot in the Navy Fighter Attack Squadron 11, the Red Rippers, and I was stationed at NAS Oceana in Virginia Beach. After upgrades were made to our jet's radar systems, we began detecting unknown objects operating in our airspace. At first, we assumed they were radar errors, but soon we began to correlate the radar tracks with multiple onboard sensors, including infrared systems, eventually through visual ID. During a training mission in Warning Area Whiskey 72, 10 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. <gasps> the object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter. The mission commander terminated the flight immediately and returned to base. Our squadron submitted a safety report, but there was no official acknowledgement of the incident and no further mechanism to report the sightings. Whoa. Soon, these encounters became so frequent that air crew would discuss the risk of UAP as part of their regular pre-flight. No briefs. way! A brief on it. Dude. Damn it! Dude. I have a goosebumps. recognizing the need for action and answers. I founded Americans for Safe Aerospace. The organization has since become a haven for UAP witnesses who were previously unspoken due to the absence of a safe intake process. More than 30 witnesses have come forward, and almost 5,000 Americans have joined us in the fight for transparency at SafeAerospace.org. The majority of witnesses are commercial pilots at majority major airlines. Often, they are veterans with decades of flying experience. Pilots are reporting UAP at altitudes that appear above them at 40,000 feet, potentially in low Earth orbit or in the gray zone below the Kármán line, making inexplainable maneuvers like right-hand turns and retrograde orbits or J-hooks. Sometimes, these reports are reoccurring, with numerous recent sightings north of Hawaii and in the North Atlantic. Other veterans are also coming forward to us regarding UAP encounters in our airspace and oceans. The most compelling involve observations of UAP by multiple witnesses and sensor systems. I believe these accounts are only scratching the surface, and more will share their experiences once it is safe to do so. Fresh in closing, I recognize, uh, go ahead and play it. I recognize the skepticism surrounding this topic. If everyone could see the sensor and video data I witnessed, our national conversation would change. I urge us to put aside stigma and address the security and safety issue this topic represents. If UAP are foreign drones, it is an urgent national security problem. If it is something else, it is an issue for science. In either case, mm. unidentified objects are concerned for flight safety. The American people deserve to know what is happening in our skies. It is long overdue. Thank Ooh. you. What well, got my attention and, and kind of gave me one of those ugh, moments when I just said pause it. Where he says, we're only scratching the surface and more people are going to come forward once they realize that it is safe. Mm -hmm. Yes. He knows it's not right now. Dude, that's crazy. He put himself out there. To think that we live in a world where literally just speaking the truth or saying what, saying what? it doesn't even matter. Speaking not truth, like lying has become more than just like, hey, if we find out you're lying, you are you, you lied under oath, you committed perjury, you're going to jail. That's, in all of our history, in all of our life time, not all of hum our human history, because surely there was a time where if you lied, you got your fucking tongue cut off. Right. Damn it. I said it right. <laughs> um, but in modern day, you lie, you lie under oath, you go to jail. This dude is afraid. These people are afraid to say what they think or see or see because they don't think they are safe. Well, that and that the loser. So a pilot can't report, hey, on this flight to Hawaii, I just saw a UFO. Yeah, you're fired. Listen, they're saying they're witnessing them in space that a normal aircraft would not be flying. You know what I mean? Listen to me. That's so fucking crazy. We talk about freedom on this show. And I have been told, I got told one day by my neighbor that I was crazy for telling him 
We are no longer a free society. I had a, a let's go Brandon sign out front of my yard. My my neighbor at our new neighborhood lost his shit on me. Um, never met him before. That was his introduction to me. Was welcome to, the welcome to the neighborhood. I can't. Well, in in fairness, I welcomed myself to the neighborhood by letting all the neighbors know who I was. Um, <laughs> I remember telling him our country is under attack. The, the sign says, save America. What does that mean, he says? Save us from losing our freedoms, which we are already doing. And he said, you're crazy. Let me ask you a question, people. Does that guy sound like he has freedom? Nope. No. He has no more free speech, and he's talking on behalf of and amongst interviews and friends and personal relationships of his that have lost their speech, their tongue has metaphorically been cut out. They can't speak because they are afraid that they are not safe. That is the opposite of freedom. So as but we that... sit here in America and claim that we're free, and those of us who say we are not free, this is the example. We are not free to do and say what we want. We no longer have that freedom. And that's the argument, though, is you can right. say whatever the fuck you want. But now there's consequences to those. It used to be you say something wrong and somebody get punched in the face for it, right? Of course. Now you could get fucking murdered. You get like, dude, everything. You could disappear, ruining <laughs> your career to your livelihood to going under attack, persecution at the highest and most mm. complex 4D levels. Um, I mean, you go outside of the lines. I mean, we're we're my career was ruined. We talk about it all the time, though. Free speech is obviously a beautiful thing, but if you say the wrong shit, you you got to understand there may be consequences for it, right? Sure. But the consequences have changed. Oh, yeah. And that's where we're saying the free speech has ended because people are unwilling to say the things they True, normally the would have said. Unwilling to say that that man is not a girl, that's a man. Because if you say that, you will be a t attacked by a mob. They'll cancel your show. They'll they'll boycott your business. They'll 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 ruin your livelihood, or they'll suicide your ass. Here's a really scary number. I am for not you. suicidal, by the way. I just want to go on the record. <laughs> I would never kill that. myself. Absolutely, <laughs> never do that. I want to live. I want to live an eternal life. I know it's almost borderline un unholy. That I, I want to live forever. But in the Bible, dude, they used to live for like four, five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred years. Like, I just want to do that. Maybe not forever, <laughs> but I want eight hundred. Matt wants to be in the Bible. I don't want to be in the Bible. Eight hundred years. That's over, but I want a few hundred years out of this thing. Eight hundred years. So I'm never taking my life, that's for sure. And I'm I'm a really so safe if someone driver. someone says you suicide, you so I did not. did not. Here's just a, a very, very random number, right? So they said... In that other video that we watched, that roughly 95% of these uh, do not get reported. The government is currently investigating at least 650 sightings. You'd put that into math, that's roughly 13,000 sightings have happened uh, minimum between aircraft pilots, military. Oh, you're 13, saying at this guy's estimated reporting yep. rate. So I'm, I'm putting I'm putting that 650 investigating at five percent. Yep. And then figure the, that the out to 100 yeah. percent. Thirteen thousand unreported is what you're saying. And this is just for the United States, by the way. Dude, this isn't, this isn't worldwide. I just want to know everything about him. Let's meet these little fuckers, man. Bring them on. We get them on the show. I picture them coming in this giant aircraft, and then it'd be like this <laughs> tiny little thing. Little people. <laughs> we just sit them on top of the, the house whiskey for the interview. We give yeah. them a microphone like this. <laughs> like, I'm not scared of them. I don't feel any reason to be scared. I just I mean, want obviously, to know. if they were dangerous, something would have already happened. Well, right? if you believe in God, one creator, one creator of all, God must have created these little creatures, right? <clears throat> Or you think God is only an earth God? <gasps> Who? What? No, God is creator of all things. Right. God was the creator of the universe. So, Do you think they worship? Do they? I don't know. We're not even allowed to talk about it whoever yet. Whoever they so, are. Yeah, whoever <laughs> they are. I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. Let's, let's, let's agree on one thing, is that no one in this country should make this a partisan issue. 
everyone in this country should now. I mean, they they got us in a pickle now. Pick a side. Pick a side. What, how? What type of shady is the government right, right. now? And now is the government lying to? There, there are. Oh, here's what they're gonna say. Here's the other side of it. Yes, they're lying to us, but it's for our own benefit. It's yes. our. It's for the greater good. It's for our own safety and our. Own. Sound familiar? Okay. The government always lies to us, and they always tell us. It's for our own safety, and they always tell us it's because we're too dumb Let to make do. our own decisions. Let and to us be decide very... that. Right. That's, the con- that's what a constitutional republic is. We decide, you execute. It has flip-flopped. Again, another exact point of us not being free. We are, are living in a world where the government is deciding for us and hiding information telling us we can't handle that. Not in this constitutional republic, not in the United States. We're supposed to be deciding. You give us the information, and then we decide what you do with it. You campaign on it. You tell us what you do, what you're going to do, and we say, you know what? I like what you're going to do. The majority in the electoral college system says you get to be our president, and then our local governments, you get to be our elected official, our representative representing us and our ideas, not your own ideas, and flip-flopped. And there are people, the I, dude, I think the majority of people in this country have been completely fooled into believing that it is the government's job to make decisions for us. To take care of us. And to take care of us. Right. <laughs> and it's not. And if you think that, you're wrong. But they'll give me $750 one right. time. Well, just, uh, I'm having a really bad... Let me tell you about a bad day. I'm an economic... Uh, they're giving me a, a stimulus, stimulus check. check. Right? They care about me. The government is not but. supposed to take care of us. It's not supposed to make our decisions for us. It's supposed to be elected by us to make the decisions we want the government to make. And if you keep allowing the government to take care of you, then they are going to make the decisions for you. That's happening And that's already. where your freedom goes. That's, where we're ha- that's happening already. Yeah. So listen, let's agree the government is lying to us and we're not as free. We can, we can leave it at we're not as free as you thought. Yeah. We've still got some freedoms. Right. Oh, 100%. Um, I mean, we're on a show right now talking about the lack of freedom. So we still have freedom. We still have freedoms, right? We may have they, that taken seriously. They haven't killed us yet. <laughs> please, Ian, please don't. Ian, is there like a control alt delete that you can just delete all of our YouTube in <laughs> one fucking fell swoop? All of our shorts, They're all onto us. All gone. poof on the internet. No, listen, that's a risk we take. We knew that. We're putting our lives at risk, our families at risk. Like, why? Because we're not free. Otherwise, there'd be a whole shitload more people getting on saying things like this. Because... As this guy said under oath, they're they're afraid. they're afraid. It's not safe to say these things. Fortunately, we don't have any real opinions on this show. We're just just trying to show you what the other people think, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get this show wrapped up. I appreciate y'all coming along with us on our crazy uh, mm-hmm. alien journey, <laughs> and um, yeah. Journey. That's not a conspiracy it's not anymore. Conspiracy. If you That's believe thing, that, though. it's not a conspiracy anymore. It's right. proven fact. Well, stop saying those words, Linda. You're gonna Ian get needs to stop saying those fucking words. Well, it's a fact. Yeah, he's gonna get us. 100%. It's a fact that guy said it. Hundred percent. It's a fact okay. that hundred percent. Right. <laughs> Listen, it is not a fact. None of it is a fact. And if anything, I, I think it's not a fact. I think what they tell us. I think what the witnesses, what the whistleblowers say. Is all Land. heavily shaded. It's all. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why would they allow him to get to this point? Right. I, I just that's don't. I'm, that's the only. It's just I'm very skeptical as well. Yeah. I, I mean, when 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 we understand that the information superhighway is used to control the minds and the thought processes of the population, what makes this any different than any other thing that they're using to make us think what they want us to think? Because here's a way to think about it, Ian. Right is they knew what this guy was going to say before he got there, 100%. Right? Like, we, we can agree on that? I think, yeah, because I, I don't know the whole... I know as a whistleblower, you're supposed to have, like, a... Essentially, like, you're, like, protected, right? Which, again, I, I don't understand the whole whistleblower process, but I do know if you remember... But if they didn't want this out, that guy wouldn't have been there, right? Well, yeah, just like they didn't want Epstein to keep serving his prison sentence. I mean, 100%. Right. So, I don't know, man. It's fucking... This- the world sucks. The world sucks. The world sucks. Let's get a guest on next show. What a clown show. world we live in. 
We need to get some guests on this way. I have an idea. We can talk about some other. You want to get a guest on? All right. Let us know. If you listen to the show, let us know uh, who you want to see as a guest. Uh, tag them or, or, or message us or do whatever. Let's see if we can get uh, get somebody on. Can who we can... get Mitch McConnell on here? I got some questions for him. <laughs> I can just he, do... I, I Just by seeing that, I don't think he'd be a great podcaster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what happens so when Mitch, he freezes? Why yeah. is there so much silence on this episode? So, Mitch, what do you think is going on in the government <laughs> with the uh, aliens? Mitch, are you okay? <laughs> do you have anything else you want to say, Mitch? Mitch, Mitch let's you need a nap. Let's get you let's back get to get your office, office. <laughs> Mitch. Anyway, we should not make fun of that man, assuming oh, huh. he is Poor a man. Guy. Anyway, all right, let's get this show. We've tried to rap three times now. We're getting the hell up out of here. I'm leaving the show with five tallied f bombs, f f bombs, f bombs today. You F-woms. got it off easy. Um, we'll see if you there's. Did great. Well, I'm gonna watch it back actually. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna watch time. it back. Ian can tally him while he produces. Ian, I need you to cut thing. out all of them but five. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for real. Anyway, all right. Thank you all for joining. Um, thank you for for all the love and support. We appreciate you. Thanks for all the kind messages and the hate. We love that too. Um, and I know what uh, happened. Mitch shit his pants. <laughs> He did look like he shit. That's his pants. the face you make when you act when you farted and you accidentally shit your pants. Bro, that is right. He didn't know what to do. They had to take him back oh to my God. His they started smelling it, and, and that's when they grabbed Mitch, him. They, they, get, they cleaned him up. Yeah. They fucking went back yourself. and wiped his ass. You can, and then, <laughs> all right, let's get him back. Mitch, what happened? I'm fine. Mitch, next time that I'm happens. Fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm I don't fine. want to talk about it. Mitch, <laughs> next time that happens, you just act cool. Play, exactly. <laughs> just pretend it didn't just happen. Like Nobody would have known. Nobody would have known except for us. That's it would be even angry. better if he turns around. Somebody fart. Who did that? Yeah, we should go back and see. That was the I shit my pants face, dude. It totally was. See if those guys behind him that that carried him away we're like we should totally make a a, a parody like our own yeah. all right zach and ian it, you guys are on it you do a mitch got mcconnell we'll get a podium. Quick, all right i gotta get that i gotta hey. close the show we are Sorry. running long Sorry. shit to. we gotta get out of here with places right. to go people to see uh appreciate all your love and support thank you again and as always people find your purpose serve your purpose and protect your purpose people thanks Peace. one two three Deuces. one two three cheers